Hey everyone, Lyric here, and this week I'm covering a reader question. Wondering if you could cover the topic of connecting with other people and building friendships while on the spectrum. This is a fantastic question. If you'd like to know my answer, please stay tuned. One thing I want to say about developing relationships as an autistic person is before I knew I was autistic, I struggled a lot more with all kinds of relationships. Also, before I found out I was autistic, I struggled with boundaries in relationships with other people, which meant I attracted the wrong kinds of people, people who benefited from violating my boundaries. A big thing for me in having better relationships with people as an autistic person is learning how to be firm in understanding what my own wants, needs, and desires are and realizing if I am doing things for the sake of other people and not because it's actually what I want. That was a big thing for me, learning what I really want and getting better at speaking up for my needs and being firm in my boundaries. The next thing it's really important to remember is quality over quantity. I have a small friend group, a very small friend circle, but the people in my circle are people that I absolutely know I can trust and are real true friends. Something else that's incredibly important for me as an autistic person in my relationships with other people is I need people in my life to be willing to accept me for the whole person, my strengths, my weaknesses, all of my identities, my autistic traits, my me being a queer person, all of these things have to be okay. The people in my life can't be people who need for me to put parts of myself away when I'm around them. People who do that to me are not my people. On a similar note, I've learned to pay attention to when I am masking more heavily or people I feel that I need to camouflage my autistic and neurodivergent traits or tone parts of myself down. I can't mask as well as I once did and I've learned that when I am masking it is because I don't feel safe. So if I am in a place, situation, or around people who cause me to mask, that means I don't feel safe around them and that's something that I need to be very aware of and pay attention to. People that need me to be a different version of myself are not people that I keep in my close inner circle. Something else I've realized about masking is before I knew I was autistic and I was masking heavily, I struggled to develop relationships with people because I wasn't bringing my most authentic self to the table. I was presenting to the world the version of myself that I thought the people around me needed or wanted me to be. And this really got in the way of me getting to know other people and made it so that other people really couldn't get to know the real me because I wasn't sharing it with anyone. Learning to let the most authentic version of myself out and finding people that love me for that version of myself has been something that has really helped me in my ability to develop relationships with other people. Engaging with others in an authentic way has allowed me to develop more authentic relationships, or as the old saying goes, letting my freak flag fly has helped the others who are like me to find me. And the higher I fly that flag, the more of the right kinds of people I tend to attract. 
Now, this doesn't mean I won't attract the wrong types of people from time to time. Unfortunately, over my life, I've realized that people who have bad intentions, if I trust them, can be really dangerous to me. I've had to learn to watch for red flags and signs that people might lie or manipulate or cheat or twist the truth around me. I have to have a very small tolerance for lying and manipulative behavior. Often that is one strike you're out with most people because of my own vulnerabilities, I cannot allow people who lie or manipulate around me the first time I see it. I have to say no, that, that that's not okay for me, bye bye. Honesty is something that I prioritize in my friendship. People who are really straightforward and honest and to the point. I'd rather someone be brutally honest with me than tell me sweet things that aren't true because I like to know exactly where I stand with someone. I tend to take people I trust for what they say to be what they mean and people that's actions and words don't match up. That's not okay for me. Something else for me in developing relationships with other people is I struggle with networking or talking just for the sake of talking about nothing, even though I can ramble and talk about what seems to be nothing to other people. Actually, I can ramble and talk about topics or subjects I'm interested in. What's been good for me is finding people that have interest and care about the same topics. It doesn't sound like I'm talking about nothing. If we are sharing a communal interest and talking about something we're both interested in. So for me, bonding over common interests. Growing up, I found peers in art classes, for example, or doing other activities that I enjoyed doing. As an adult, met people doing circus arts and hoop dancing bonding with people over similar hobbies, tasks, and interests. If you're into drawing, maybe go to an art class and you can meet people at your art class and also like art and things like that. The other thing that's really important for me in relationships is that people understand and respect the ways in which I communicate. I, for example, if someone texts me, I am not going to respond right away. And if someone emails me, I'm not going to respond right away either. I sometimes need extra time to process something I've read and to formulate a response. And I need people who are willing to respect that everyone will respond when they are capable. If you need someone that's going to write you back as soon as you send a text message that same day or within the hour, that's not going to be me. If that's going to be a problem, it's, it's just not going to work out because I I'm not going to be available to anyone 24 hours a day. In modern society, a lot of times they want you to be available all the time. And other than my nesting partner <laughs> that I live with, I don't even talk to my best friend very often. Like we see or speak a couple times a month at best. And that, that's a, a best friend of mine that I've known since high school and I'm really close with. I need people to understand that I, I'm not as plugged in or as responsive into communications as some people are and I sometimes lose touch and lose track of time and don't realize it's been months and we haven't spoken. That doesn't mean I don't like you, it just means time and space is weird in my head and I need people who understand and won't take it, take it personally if I drop off the face of the earth for a while. Similarly, my phone always has the ringer off. I literally don't answer phone calls that I'm not expecting unless you are my grandma or my mom or David. Even my close friends know that we schedule calls in advance and my ringer is likely not on and my phone may not be on me and I have all the notifications silenced on my phone and I'm not available for surprise anything. Really, I don't, I don't do surprises and that, that has to be okay with people who want to be in a relationship with me. So I'd love to ask my audience, what advice would you give for the reader who had the question about how to develop relationships as an autistic person? I'm sure you have some brilliant gems of wisdom that I've left out and I'd love to hear what you have to say about this topic. Thank you all so much for hanging out. If you are still with us at the end of the video, hit that thumbs up so I know I didn't lose you in transit to this point. 
Thank you everyone who shares your experience and also your answers to this reader question. This was such a great question. Thank you, of course, to my reader as well who offered this question. Thanks to all of my readers who are always offering your questions as well. I'm really appreciative and grateful. Thanks to everyone who shares your questions, your comments, your video feedback. Of course, thanks to the monetary subscribers, whether you are subscribing on YouTube, Facebook, Patreon, or Twitter super followers. I'm really grateful for each and every single one of you. Those of you who do that little monetary subscription help for things like website hosting, transcriptioning software, and closed captioning software. I've got a couple of those for a couple different devices and a couple different platforms. Also, the technology with which these vlogs are filmed on, none of this would be possible without the help and support of the viewers like you. So thanks everyone. I'm really grateful. I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.